size doesn't matter. One morning in Tidmouth Sheds, Gordon was being polished before his express. As usual, he was boasting to the other engines. The reason I'm being polished instead of any of you lot is because I'm much grander than all of you put together, he said pompously. That's not true, retorted Percy. We're all grand in our own ways. <laughs> Don't make me laugh, Percy, snickered Gordon. There's nothing grand about you silly little tank engines. Even your Thomas can't go a day without causing some sort of delay on that branch line of his. From what I hear, Gordon, put in Duck, the last time you said something like that, you fell straight into a ditch. Ha! <laughs> snorted Gordon. Anyway, there's a reason I'm being polished and you're not, little duck. It's because I'm the largest engine on the island and I require far more attention than that of any of you simple shunting types. Just you wait, Gordon, said Percy angrily. One of these days someone's going to put you in your place so strongly your buffers will fall off. Gordon laughed. Don't be silly, Percy. If any of you little engines even tried to hit my buffers, you'd fall apart. I'm much stronger than you and am far better than all you tank engines put together. And with that, Gordon puffed away, leaving a very cross set of engines behind. He seems to be getting more puffed up every day, grumbled James. It really does mean a lot if even you're annoyed with him, replied Henry. Quite, added Edward. I will admit he's being a bit rude, but I'd better not hear that any of you tried to knock his buffers off. Am I clear, Percy? Yes, Edward, muttered the saddle tank. All the same, the engines agreed that something must be done, but none knew what, though their chance would come sooner than they expected. Early the next morning, Henry brought the flying kipper into Vickerstown. As he waited for his vans to be unloaded, he heard an unfamiliar whistle in the distance. A few minutes later, a large brown tank engine covered in soot and ash pulled into the station. Excuse me, Big Green, he called. The name is Henry, thank you, remarked the green engine bluntly. All right, uh, excuse me, Henry, but do you know where I'm supposed to drop off this steel? I was told to deliver it to Vickerstown, but I don't think I'm supposed to drop it off here. There's a goods yard just down the line, replied Henry, glancing back at the engine's long train of flatbeds. All right, thanks, Greeny, said the engine, and pulled away. Greeny, spluttered Henry. He complained all the way back to Napford. And he called me Greeny, he told the other engines in Napford Yard. Of all the insulting nicknames, the nerve of that engine. What did you say he looked like again? Asked Thomas. He was a very large tank engine, recalled Henry. He had filthy brown paint and was delivering a train of steel. You'd think he'd never seen a wash down in his life, the silly engine. That must be Hurricane, exclaimed Thomas. Hurricane? Who's Hurricane? asked Ryan. He works in the steelworks on the mainland, explained Thomas. I met him when I took James's goods train to Bridlington a while back. He's probably come to deliver some steel. Looked like he was delivering the whole steelworks to me, replied Henry. He must have been pulling twenty flatbeds when I saw him. This gave Thomas an idea. Without another word, he raced off to the station leaving a confused Henry and Ryan behind. When he arrived, he saw Gordon waiting with his coaches. Good morning, galloping sausage, teased Thomas. You impudent little tank engine, spluttered Gordon. I ought to shunt you away for that. I wouldn't do that if I were you, Gordon, said Thomas snidely. Otherwise, Hurricane might come after you. Pah, <laughs> scoffed Gordon. Whoever this Hurricane is, I'm sure he won't stand a chance against me. Well, Gordon, said Thomas cheekily, Hurricane is a very strong engine. He's got ten driving wheels and doesn't need to lug around an ugly tender like you. Gordon huffed indignantly. I remember seeing him pull thirty flatbeds of steel to Bridlington when I first saw him on the mainland, said the tank engine. It didn't even phase him. In fact, I think he could have pulled much more. Really? asked Gordon, secretly impressed. Oh yes, smirked Thomas. In fact, he's one of the toughest engines I know. One time, he raced right through molten steel without stopping just to save me. He didn't even flinch. Quite the tank engine, wouldn't you say? Uh, yes, quite, replied Gordon. Well then, said Thomas, I suggest you watch what you say about us silly little tank engines or else you'll get rocked like a hurricane. 
Maybe then the Express will finally have a tank engine pulling it instead of you. That'd be interesting, wouldn't it? Gordon, who was at a loss for words, said nothing as the guard blew his whistle. He pulled quietly out of the station, leaving behind a giggling Thomas. As he headed towards Vickerstown, Gordon couldn't help but feel worried. Surely Thomas was joking. No engine would ever take away my express, and how many engines have even seen this hurricane? Only Thomas, that's right. I'm sure he was just being his usual silly self, there's nothing to worry about. When Gordon arrived at Vickerstown, he saw James waiting at the platform beside him. Hello, little James, huffed Gordon. Morning, said James. You won't believe what Thomas told me at Knapford, began Gordon. He started going off about this engine named Hurricane, and now he'll put me in my place if I call any of the tank engines silly again. Isn't that preposterous, James? But James was rather tired of Gordon's boasting, and decided to play along. Oh no, Gordon, said James. Hurricane is a very powerful engine, and he doesn't take too kindly to rudeness. I saw him when I went to the mainland to save Thomas, and he almost pushed me off the slag tip when I tried to leave the steelworks. Gordon's smile faded, but James is just grew. Hurricane even raced right through some molten steel without even flinching just to save Thomas. Those tank engines have to stick together, you know. Oh, uh, well, uh, yes, of course, James, stuttered Gordon. Take my advice, whispered James. I heard Hurricane's going to be working here for a few days to help out, so you'd better play it safe. If he catches you acting rude to any of the tank engines, he'll probably push you off the rails. Thank you, my dear James, replied Gordon. What would I do without you? And with that, Gordon headed off for a drink, while James tried his hardest to contain his laughter. When Gordon returned, he found his coaches at the platform. As he went to get coupled, he saw a large brown tank engine a few tracks across coupled to its own row of coaches. Gordon knew who it was. Hello, said the tank engine. My name's Hurricane. What's yours, Big Blue? Gordon was about to retaliate at the nickname Big Blue, but held his tongue. Um, it's Gordon, he replied slowly, trying his hardest not to aggravate the engine. Gordon, huh? I think Thomas told me all about you when we first met. Oh, well, uh, Matt Thomas certainly is a very useful and kind and honest engine, said the big engine through gritted teeth. Only good things, I hope. Indeed, said Hurricane. Is it true that you really slid into a ditch because you didn't want to pull a goods train? Gordon was about to furiously deny the claim, but quickly subsided. Well, um, I was young, you see, Hurricane. Was a lot more stubborn in those days. I see, chuckled Hurricane. <laughs> well, I'd best be off. There's a commuter train with my name on it. Well, I wish I'd gotten a wash first. This soot won't be pleasing anyone anytime soon. Well, I think that... Gordon cut off before he could comment about how proper engines are always clean. That, uh, your soot shows how hard you work, Hurricane. The passengers will love being pulled by such a hard-working engine. Really? Oh, thanks, Big Blue, replied the decapod. Don't mention it, said Gordon slowly, flinching at the idea of a dirty goods engine pulling a passenger train. See you soon, Gordon, called Hurricane as he departed. Oh yes, uh, farewell for now, replied Gordon as he watched Hurricane disappear into the distance. It's only for a few more days, Gordon told himself. I can keep this up for that long, can't I? But it would be harder than he thought. Later, Gordon arrived at Knapford with the Express. He saw Oliver waiting at a nearby platform with the slip coaches. Afternoon, Oliver, said Gordon. I see you've taken Doc's coaches today. Oh yes, smiled Oliver. Doc's busy elsewhere, so the fat controller's asked me to take his passenger train to Halsborough. Well, I haven't pulled passengers in a while, so this is quite exciting. Well, yes, began Gordon, but I do hope that you take care on your run. Your lack of experience might lead to trouble. What do you mean, asked Oliver, slightly offended. Gordon was about to reply, but then remembered Hurricane. Well, um, you see, my dear Oliver, you're quite the excellent goods engine. One of the best on the island, in fact, but I'm only hoping that you make sure to take extra care with your passengers since it has been a while. Wouldn't want your reputation to be damaged. 
Oliver was surprised. Well, uh, thank you, Gordon. No problem, little, I, I mean, a, a grand tank engine. I'm sure you'll do the little Weston proud. And with that, Gordon quickly left to get refueled, leaving Oliver feeling very confused indeed. When Gordon arrived at the yards, he looked all around for any tank engines nearby. But he was so busy looking around him that he didn't watch where he was going. He bumped right into a line of coal trucks which were being shunted under the coal hopper by Percy. Whoops! Sorry, Gordon! cried Percy. The big engine was covered from end to end in thick black coal dust. Percy held his breath and waited for Gordon to insult and yell at him. That's quite all right, Percy, said Gordon through gritted teeth. I wasn't looking where I was going. Could happen to any engine. Percy was taken aback. Oh, well, I thank you, Gordon. No worries, Percy, said Gordon slowly. I'd best get cleaned up before my next train, then. And Gordon puffed away to get to the washdown. Percy didn't know what to think. Has Gordon gone mad? He asked. Well, it had to happen sometime replied his driver. Later that day, Percy met Thomas at Farquhar and told him about what had happened. And he didn't yell at me once. I think Gordon's dome is cracked, Thomas. He's never behaved like this before. That is odd, said Thomas, trying to hold in his laughter. Any idea what could be the matter? asked Percy. Not a clue, smirked Thomas, and hurried away before he could let out a fit of giggles. For the rest of the day, Gordon continued to praise any tank engines he came across, not once laughing or yelling at them whenever something went wrong. He even offered to help bank Ryan's goods train up his hill, much to the bafflement of the tank. At the end of the day, Gordon was at Vickerstown again, waiting to depart with his final express run for the day. He was exhausted, not just from the day's work, but from having to bite his tongue at any tank engine he came across. What a humiliating day, said Gordon to no one in particular. I'll never be able to recover my image after today, and I still have at least a whole other day to go. Don't know how much more I can take. A grand engine like me shouldn't have to live like this. Easy, boy, comforted his driver. Just one more run and you can get a good night's sleep. But that won't have to stop me from dealing with the horrors of tomorrow, wailed Gordon, before checking to see if anyone was around. I'm tired of dealing with these silly little tank engines. Hey there, came a voice from behind. What are you moaning about? Gordon looked over. Pulling into the platform beside him was Hurricane, having brought in a goods train from the mainland. Oh, horrors, said Gordon under his breath. Something about silly little tank engines, was it? Rallied Hurricane. Oh, my dear Hurricane, cried Gordon. Please have mercy on me. I've been nice to all these tank engines all day. Surely we'll let this one moment slide. Please, my dear engine. What are you talking about, Big Blue? Quizzed Hurricane. I'm not going to do anything to you. Gordon stopped. You... you're not going to push me off the rails? I mean, no! Replied Hurricane. What sort of bloke would do something like that? But Thomas said that if I said anything rude about tank engines again, you would find me and pay me out. And Gordon explained everything. When he had finished, Hurricane couldn't help but chuckle. <laughs> oh, cool your pistons, Big Blue. I'm not that bad at all. Sure, I may work in a grimy, sooty place, but I'm pretty relaxed and nice, so long as you don't test my patience. Well then, that's quite a relief, sighed Gordon. Now I know no one will be taking over my express. But there's two things I really can't stand, continued Hurricane. It's rudeness and dishonesty. Now Thomas really played you for a fool, didn't he? Indeed he did, agreed Gordon. Oh, to pay out that silly little tank engine for his filthy trick. I was thinking the same thing, replied Hurricane. But I'll help you on one condition. Of course, said Gordon. Try to be nicer to the tank engines here. They may be small, but they need all the support they can get. They do play a big part in keeping the railway running. After all, otherwise you'd have to fetch your own coaches. Don't even joke about that, gasped Gordon. Certainly, Hurricane, I can try that. Right on, mate, smiled the decapod. Now what's the plan? At Natford Yard, Thomas was shunting a line of trucks to take back to Farquhar for his nightly goods trip. As he went about his work, 
he heard a loud puffing noise. Must be Gordon coming back with his express, Thomas thought to himself. Hope he won't mind if I accidentally bump these trucks into him. He was surprised to see Hurricane pull into the yards. Oh, Hurricane! called Thomas. It's so good to see you again. Nice to see you too, Thomas, replied Hurricane. Oh, you've been busy on your branch line? Oh, yes, smiled Thomas. I'm actually taking a goods train there right now. It seems like more passengers come to visit every day. Not surprised, mind you. My branch line is the most important part of the whole railway, after all. Quite, said Hurricane. I also hear that you've been a bit too cheeky lately. Thomas was taken aback. Well, no more than usual, Hurricane. What's it to you? You don't even work here. Well, it matters to my friend Golden, boomed Hurricane. Gordon, spluttered Thomas. How can you be friends with that pompous blue galloping sausage? The question you should be asking is how much trouble you'll be in for playing that trick on him, retorted Hurricane. No, please, cried Thomas. I'm too important. Listen here, little boy blue, puffed Hurricane. You can either apologize to Gordon for scaring him like that, or you can go to the works for buffer damage. What'll it be? I'll say sorry. Just please don't hurt me, wailed Thomas. Very well, then, said Hurricane. I expect you'll tell Golden when he arrives with his express. Yes, yes, I'll tell him then, shuddered Thomas. And with that, Hurricane puffed away to the sheds, trying to contain his laughter, while a pale Thomas tried to calm himself down. Later, Hurricane arrived at the sheds where Gordon was waiting. You must be quite the performer, Hurricane, because that Thomas gave quite the apology. Short old Gordon. In all my days, I don't think I've ever seen him more frightened. Ah oh, well, said Hurricane. It's just a knack. Comes very handy on the mainland, especially over at Bridlington. Do tell, smiled Gordon. And so Hurricane told Gordon all about his work on the mainland, and how his large size had scared many an engine. And then the diesel raced away so quickly he came off at a bend in the line, and I had to rescue him, finished Hurricane. Certainly served him right for calling you a ten-wheeled brick, replied Gordon. Nerve of some engines. Ah oh, well, smiled Hurricane. At least I showed him who's the better engine. Indeed, smiled Gordon. For a laid-back engine, you're quite the serious sort, Hurricane. You betcha, laughed the tank engine. I take no nonsense from any silly bloke out there. Guess you could say I'm quite tender about those sorts of things. Just as any respectable engine would be, added Gordon. Quite the nice change of attitude compared to the rest of the tank engines here. And it's nice to see a tender engine that's actually humble for once, replied Hurricane. I remember a red engine from here that visited our steelworks and it took hours to convince him to push a row of trucks. <sighs> Sounds typical, chuckled Gordon. And with that, the big engine drifted off to sleep, happy to have befriended one tank engine that hadn't soured him on their first meeting.